Welcome to Swarf and Chips. This week it's Matsura's takeover show. This is your lineup. We're going to be talking new machines and the events that they've got lined up. However, I am joined by the national sales manager, Dominic Seminario. Welcome to the show, Dominic. Thank you very much. Now, I've got to say, you're looking rather dashing today, all in blue. You look like a Matsura. Well, I try my best. <laughs> He's not as efficient as one. No, maybe I could talk like a robot, I suppose. <laughs> more downtime on this. Brill, <laughs> more downtime. I'm going to put you on the spot. You've got okay. one minute. Tell us about you as a company, Matsura. Matsura, okay. Well, what we endeavour to do within the industry is supply technology based solutions in the machine tool market. So we, you know, we focus on not just the application and the solution in the automation that we provide and the technology, but the aftercare. The aftercare is a big thing with us as a company. It's, I've been there a number of years and we've always focused on the customer. Customer is king because if a customer is happy, he comes back. And I mean, I've been to a few companies and we said, we've said this before, you know, when I walk around and I've spoken to companies that have your machines, everyone's so pleased. They say it's a wicked machine and they're always really positive. So that's quite a nice thing. That's a nice, well. that's a nice compliment. That's you know, you really. pick up on that. And it, a lot of people talk about your service as well. Because we focus, you know, obviously being part of the management team and I have been for, for many, many years, we focus on the infrastructure to provide a very high level of aftercare. Because you know any machine tool that you buy, and you can go and buy many, many different machine tools in the market, but people always remember what you do when there's a problem. They never mm -hmm. remember what you if it works fine. So you you know you get counted or you're accountable when things go wrong, not when things go well. Mm, it's so true. And I think if you've got a machine that delivers such performance, it's no good doing that, and then. If it, if it does have a problem, not being able to fix it because you almost lose what you've gained. Well, correct. Obviously, a lot of the product that we sell is automated, as you well know. Lots of pallets and tools, which is sort of a lot of our strap lines, really. But So the thing is, with pallets and tools, a machine that's running for many hours, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, when it goes down, it's not down for a shift. It's down for three shifts. It could be mm. down all weekend. So so the uptime, the service care, the after sale is, is paramount to a guy looking at investing a lot of money in our product. Mm. Right, okay, Matt Shaw is a brand, but you've got many other brands here. I'm not going to go into detail of each one, but as you've got a big portfolio of, of machines, can you tell me pretty much the extent of the machines that you have? Okay, so we can go from a very small vertical three axis, five axis machine of say sub half a metre, right up to a long bed twin spindle gantry that could do four or five metres in span. So that's in machine tools. We do three axis, four axis, five axis milling. We also offer turning um, with the Murata product, very small twin spindle gantry fed uh, automatic lathes to toss hooling, which is obviously very large three, four metre BTLs. So, so really any technical solution that a customer is looking you know, to procure, we can provide the full project management package and the aftercare. And that's with sale guys, you're not anyone, no one's separate or anything like that. Everyone just works under the same umbrella. We 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 buy all our products. We're not just a dealer. We are we we buy the product from the principals, we then sell it to the end user and take full responsibility in delivering that package. And which one, whichever one he's going out to sell, he changes the colour of his suit accordingly. <laughs> Absolutely. But the way actually the way we actually do it is under the Matsura brand. So, you know, obviously a big thing that we're trying to do this year is lift the awareness in the market that we do sell other products. You know, we sell quite a lot of other products throughout the year, but obviously we're just looking to raise the awareness. Okay, Dominic, new machines now. You've got the MX330. Where does it fit in the whole portfolio? The MX330 is quite exciting, really. I mean, we've been marketing this machine now for 12 months and it's finally arrived. We've got... We've got one already that's been installed only two weeks ago and we've got some more machines arriving next week that we're using um, as, at our open house to actually launch the product into the, the UK market. Now the MX330 is a smaller derivative of our very successful MX520 machine which came about six, seven years ago and we've managed to penetrate a lot of small businesses and also to our big accounts where we've put two, three, four, five machines in in a row for, for production. Now the MX330 is quite a nice machine size because it lends itself to being automated. So what we've done over the last couple of years in its design is actually get Matsura, our principal, to put the Matsura MAM palette technology within that machine size. So what you've now got is a very small compact machine tool 
with 10 pallets, 90 tools, giving you the MAM 7235V technology that we've been selling for, for over 20 years. And I'd like to think we're quite well known for it, but obviously I'm taking this opportunity to promote it today. But the, the, the MX330 now gives you a mini version of that technology at two thirds of price and at two thirds of footprint. Right, so I'm picking up, you've got the success of one machine, you're putting that into this machine, but it's a lot smaller at a different price point from the larger machine as well. So that's the USP. Yeah, and you can, yes. you can see it there, yeah. That, that, this pallet pool on here is very compact, isn't it? And you can load three of these pallets at once, correct? Correct. And it's 10 station. Is it, is it always 10 station? Is there any more than that? Or it's not expandable? It is a, it is a machine that comes as a, a fixed unit? It's a fixed unit. Now, that's where we, we obviously got two product lines, MX, MAM. Okay, Matsuro Advanced Manufacturing, multi-pallet, multi-tool. 32 pallets, 320 tools. We've diluted that into the MX range, being a single table machine that we have automated with the likes of Lang or with Eroa or Selro. But what we've done now with the MX330 is we've now incorporated Matsura's automation for the first time in the MX range, giving you 10 pallets and 90 tools, no more. But if you want more, it's the same technology to buy the MAM. So it yeah. gives a small, medium enterprise company the opportunity to start with a watered down MAM technology that the quality, the capability and its accuracy is no different, but the price is much more affordable. So when you talk about two thirds the price, you can still have the same technology for a lot less cost per month. I think what, what is, would be good to establish at this stage is it seems obvious to us watching here, but this machine is a five axis machining centre with a 10, 10 pallet pool. Why would somebody want to have that pallet pool, Dom, on this machine? I've been selling MAM 7235Vs for 20 years, okay, predominantly to motorsport and aerospace. Most of the small, medium enterprise companies say, Dom, it's a great machine, 32 pallets, but I don't use it. 10 pallets gives you the overnight run. Mm. And that's what most companies are looking for, is set the machine up during the day and run automated overnight, unattended, where they get a very good return on their investment. What about technically though, Dom? How does the machine set up? What's the speed of it? How big a workpiece can you put on it? Okay, so the MX330, a standard, is a single table machine, like the MX520 and the 850. 30 tools is standard, and you can have 60 tools or 90 tools as an option. And obviously what we've done with the pallet system, you can have the 10 pallet changer, or we're actually, in this model, we're gonna have it as a PC1, pallet changer one, automation ready. So you can have it as a, the MAM 7235V pallet that you'll probably see on the screen as we flick through. You can actually zero point change that yourself or we can get a robot. So you've got a 330 diameter capacity by 300 mil height, 15,000 RPM as standard, 20,000 RPM as an option. And you've got all the full five axis package. You can have the really short probing, high pressure coolant, swarf management, everything else. Yeah, I was going to say swarf all management. The so whole, if, you, the whole if you're automating, you want the swarf management, the through spindle coolant, all of those come with it. What about the spindle? Is it a BBT40? Yes, all our spindles, all Matsura spindles are big plus. Yeah, because BBT. the Maxia spindle is also an important part of your, call it sales pitch, isn't it? Just give us a very quick overview as to, because you do a lot with spindles at your, uh, in Colville as well, don't you? What is the Maxia spindle? The Maxia spindle is what Matsura... Have we branded our spindle as our spindle. So the Maxis just stands for our spindle. It's totally designed in-house and manufactured by Matsura in Japan. And we also have other facilities around the world. So the Maxis spindle, be it many, many years ago when we obviously developed the dual wound spindle motor to give you high speed, high power, low speed, high torque, gives you a very versatile, what I call best of both. So you've got a conventional, Powerhouse, you've got a high speed uh, for, for your non for your non ferret. Now, um, you've been part of the steering committee, haven't you? Because you're very passionate about this machine. And Dominic, tell me what your predictions for this machine are going to be. Predictions, that's a good question. Well, obviously, it took us a long time to get this machine launched. Matsura decided to make the MX330 on the success of the 520. Um, but for me, it was a no-brainer to have a multi-pallet version of it, Matsura's own technology. With the MX520 being a success, we've had to go out and buy or work with other suppliers. But our customers want the whole machine to be blue. Okay, I know I'm wearing a blue suit, but they want it to be blue. <laughs> so, so when it's blue, that means it's, it's, one, it's one brand, it's one supplier. 
So when we look at the success of the, the 35V that we've had for many, many years, this is just a smaller version of that, giving you, obviously, the unmanned running, 90 tools over 10 pallets will be more than enough, and the affordability. It's all about penetrating some customers that potentially want to buy our technology that can't maybe stretch financially, but I truly believe with this, now they can. And it's took me 20 years to get this machine. And uh, you put your job on the line, didn't you, for this one? I did pitch to my president for a couple of hours, yeah. Yeah? yeah and got all our group companies to support me. So, so if you don't sell it, you won't be coming back next year? I think I, think I will. <laughs> I, don't, I don't see a problem. There is going to be a big market for this machine, in all seriousness, because you can, you can, you can put it into any company, can't you? You can go into a small subcontractor uh, that may be restricted in floor space, and also maybe restricted financially in what they can they can afford, but do want to, as you've said before, touch, taste and feel Matsura. So you'll have that marketplace, but you'll also have maybe a lot of your existing customer base as well, which might have the 520s, the MAM 72s, that, that can get the benefits out of this technology as well. So I, I, I can't see you losing anyway, really. Well, that's the point. See, you know, when, when we were designing the product, you know, you know, we were tweaking the design over the last couple of years, there was a lot of passion coming through all the group companies, all the heads of Matsura. So when you look at everything that we've learned over the last 25 years in making five axis machine tools, it's in this little machine. Mm. You know, it's almost been nicknamed the mini mam. You know, so, you know, at our open house is where we're launching it. You know, that's, you know, there's been a lot of effort put into its the pre-marketing ability. We've obviously, you've given us this great opportunity to, to use this as a platform to, to tell the industry. But come and see it. Come and see it at our open house. Come and see it at Southern. You know, we're going to be there with it. We're on a bit of a road show with this machine for this for the next 12 months. Okay, and just to finish off, Crossway and Gardner, a little bit of a success story because they bought it already. They had the 850 and they've bought it now as well. So that's your first sale, right? Correct. Right. Yes, so they, they, they were in the market again, uh, a very exclusive engine manufacturer looking for a large five axis machine tool. They came up to the showroom, they saw the MAM 72 multi pallet machines and thought, wow, we could actually use this technology to do small batch, unmanned, leave the machine set up, zero point setting. When they then actually had a quotation on the machine that they would have liked, at that particular time, it just stretched their budget with the investment of the MX850. So obviously, our sales team went to work and said, by the way, we've got this new machine, it's this, it's slightly smaller, it's obviously not so many pallets, not so many tools, but more affordable. And he's given us an order without seeing the machine, and it's now been delivered and installed for the last three weeks. Okay, we've already picked up on it, but the 520, let's talk more about this machine. The MX520 was launched a few years ago, and it was our first single table five axis machine for many, many years. Huge success, huge success globally. Um, last year alone, I think we sold a third of our sales were the MX machines, both the 520 and the 850, the 520 being the most popular. With the 520, what we found is not only will it go into a small company, it's going into larger companies, and then they're demanding on us to automate it. So, as you've mentioned already, I'm on the steering committee. The next phase of the MX520 will be a PC4 version that we're going to be showing at EMO this year. So with what we've done with the PC10 on the MX330, we've now got, let's say I had a little bit of an influence, we've got a four, a four pallet version coming out on the MX520 because everybody's looking to automate their product. Mm. Everybody wants to leave the job set. Everybody wants three plus two, five axis simultaneous and leave the machine running because when you're not there, you're not earning money. Mm. If the spindle's running, you're making money. So Don, this is a full five axis simultaneous machine, isn't it? This cutting demonstration that we filmed here was at Southern Manufacturing and you were machining at five metres a minute at 15,000 RPM, which is pretty quick. Correct, yeah. I mean, obviously all our Matsura machines are high speed. So we do 12,000, 15,000, 20,000. We can offer up to 46,000 RPM depending on the application. But all our machines, depending on what level of software you then add to the machining centre, you can obviously do two, three, four, and we have some customers machining eight, 10, 12 meters a minute, be it three axis, four axis, or five axis simultaneous. Do you, uh, the other point is the, the commercial side of this. You entered the market with this machine, not just trying to provide a machine that had all the hallmarks of the Matsura brand, but at a competitive price. That's been part of your success too. Correct, well, I mean, again, when we took this machine to Southern some years ago, 
it was Roger and I's decision to actually put the price on the machine because we felt we wanted to tell the market that the machine was affordable. Because everybody thinks as a Matsura is, I'd love a Matsura but I can't afford mm -hmm. it. A bit like going to go and buy a Rolls Royce or a Bentley. Mm -hmm. You only go and look because you, you can afford to buy it. You don't go and look because you can't afford to buy it. Mm -hmm. The MX is totally different. It's affordable to everybody. It is also very important to say, Dom, we talk about automation, but Matsura, you do sell a lot of these machines without the automation, and you've got other machines that go slightly bigger as well, like this 850, the MX850. Why was this one brought into the... Again, you know, being part of the steering committee, it's always like, what can, we what can we make next for market? And the MX520 was such a success that, you know, the 850 was, 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 was spawned, you know. We in the UK have sold a few. Um, in Germany, they've sold a lot more. And in America, a lot more. There's a bigger demand. What we find is that, especially in Engine Valley, as I call it, where I am, um, a lot of small components. But we also do the MAM 72100H, which is a much bigger machine. And uh, on the drawing board at the moment is, is one yet even bigger to come. So, you know, maybe a one and a half metre five axis from Matsura. So that's on its way. Going on to your website, I can tell that you're really good at keeping up to date. You've got lots of events happening, which we'll touch on, and job opportunities. Uh, let's start with your events. What events have you got happening this year? Well, obviously, in March, we've got our open house where we're launching uh, the, the MX330 and the Murata MT100, which is a twin spindle horizontal opposed uh, CNC turning centre, along with other machines. There'll be MAM and Cublex and H plus 300s there. Um, other events, we're doing the Southern Manufacturing this year and we're also looking at going at the Advanced Manufacturing Show at the NEC in June. So you've got your open house March 7th, 8th and 9th. Southern Manufacturing is the 21st to the 23rd of March. You've got a busy month. And job opportunities? Lots of job opportunities at the moment. We are still looking to expand. We're currently looking for uh, service engineers, um, some sales personnel to grow the team. Sales? What's the salary? Good bonuses? Well, good perks. I don't know. <laughs> skills I'll ask the boss, shall I? <laughs> but no, seriously, we are, we are on, a, on, a, on a growth. We are growing. Um, you know, business is, is, is difficult, but good. But we are looking to grow and add to the, and add to the Matsura team. Talking about case studies, we've got four. We're going to kick start with Cosworth, and this is our most watched video here at MTD. It's really informative. It's very interesting because you're collaborating with the tooling and the machines. Can you talk to us? Because it's a whole system all in one, isn't it? Correct. There. This is um, 11 Matsura machines on a fast M system with also a tool hive. So the, the system will not only deliver the pallet to the machine, depending on what operation it wants to manufacture in priority order, it will also transfer tooling to the machine in time to do that operation. So there's a number of tools that can be shared amongst all the machines, obviously reducing their tooling cost. It looks like volume, but in a way it is and it isn't. Correct. The system can obviously cope for volume manufacture, but a lot, a lot of the reasons why people buy automated systems is actually to do small batch production, variety of complex parts. So what it gives you is the uptime, the runtime obviously unmanned, um, but whereby obviously if you're doing the same part over and over again, you wouldn't necessarily need the flexibility of being able to change from one part to another. The FastM systems give you the ability to run 10 of those, five of those, 100 of those as you require them. Without the setup times? And you lose the setup time, and obviously the spindle runtime then is maximised. So your utilisation is almost 100% on something like this. It's an incredible video. This I watched it again before I knew you were coming, obviously today. And you, I kind of learn every time you watch it at, at what what your capabilities can be as a solution provider. This is so intelligent. Um, it even plans the the production process, doesn't it? It plans what tools should be used and if one tool is being used in one machine it will plan around that because the tool hive has all the tools rather than the machine tools, correct? Correct, absolutely right. And also the fixtures are pulled from, uh, from obviously a storage area, again depending on what the planning or the production planning is. Super intelligent, incredible. It is, basically you put all the information into the system and then the system makes what you want with a delivery date. And that is really that's in a nutshell. It. That's it, really. That's the whole point of the system. Is this the best, call it, manufacturing production process in the UK, in your eyes? For making those particular components, yes. So who's responsible for this setup? We are. 
Um, obviously, we were the main principal supplier. We sold the solution to Cosworth um, and we were the main vendor. So we then work with FastEmd in this case and we project manage the whole delivery, the installation and obviously the up, up, upkeep of the machine. And it's scalable as well, isn't it? It doesn't just have to be the fact that you've got six machine tools. You could have two, you could have three, you could have 20 or 30. So it doesn't matter whether you're a smaller company or somebody like Cosworth. Absolutely. I mean, the whole point is, is that we speak to a client and say, what is your aspiration? Where do you want to go with automation? Is it a robot? Is it an FMS? Is it palletized, just a standalone system? What do you want? Because automation is a very loose word. It stands for so much. What do you want? Where do you want to be? How much do you want to invest? How much do you want to make? But this is almost the ultimate with having all the tools in one place, being pulled to each machine, and obviously all the fixtures and the components in different locations, and all of the planning done by a very intelligent Yeah, this is, this is the, the, the top of the tree. I mean, to have a system like this, obviously attached to Matsura, we delivered the whole solution, just obviously represents what we mean about automation, really. No wonder it's got the most views. Next case study, we've got X-Track. Now, this is really nice. They've said you've helped them reduce setups, flexibility, and speed. Uh, the speed of ma the machines have really impressed them, and 240 tools on the machine. That's a lot of tools. It is, especially on a BT50, which is obviously a large tool taper size. I mean, the MAM 72100H is a large five axis. It's our biggest at the moment. It's over a metre by 800 capacity in five axis. Um, obviously, Extract manufacture very high performance gearboxes for the motorsport industry. Um, and again, you know, they've been a, a big customer for many years. They went out to market, had a look at a number of our competitors, and came back to Matsura. So we were, we were delighted with that. It's good to see a machine. We're talking about the 330 and the 520, but then you, you, you've got something as sizable as this. So you've got the total flexibility throughout the range. And I think that's a big part of what this video demonstrates really. Yeah, and obviously the Cosworth video, I mean, we, we didn't elaborate on it, but the Cosworth video is a number of horizontal 630 pallet machines and a number of these five axis machines. So what they're processing, similar to obviously what x are doing, is that you're manufacturing four axis prismatic and then five axis prismatic on the same size pallet machine. Two pretty prestigious businesses, x and Cosworth. Big accolade for you to have Matsura installations. It is, and we're very proud to have them as customers, yeah, and we, and as we are with all our customers. I'm picking up, it's a lot of motorsport business that you've got. I mean, we've got CNF Engineering. They've got four machines for you, and it's, again, motorsport. Motorsport and electronics at CNF, yeah, I agree. But we also, the business was always set up to, to predominantly go after the aerospace market many years ago, um, which is still a big, significant part of our business. But when you look at the engine valleys, I call it, or the prismatic market for motorsport, we offer a very, very high-tech solution, um, giving the customer, obviously, very good flexibility to run on manned and small batch production, as well as volume production. And this is a great example, you mentioned CNF, the fact that we've, we've spoken about two equipment manufacturers and then we, we, we look here at an installation in a subcontract machining shop that are, that are chasing every, every minute when they're machining parts, aren't they? Because they're in a very competitive industry, are stacked out with Matsuras as well and that's their latest purchase, the 520. It is and obviously, you know, Neil at CNF is, is, a, is a very good friend of mine, I've known him many, many years, but at the, at the end of the day, he's chasing every second. I mean, his, his multi-pallet horizontals at CNF they do not stop night and day. He then went into five axis because he wanted to give his company a new platform in which to sell five axis unmanned running. And obviously then with the MX520 edition, which was only a few months ago, he's now got the quick turnaround for one-offs and, and very small batch production in a prototype and environment. So he's covered all avenues with the Matsura range. That table there is great as a fit because you've got the fixed table with the integrated C axis so you can use that in two different ways, can't you? You can have it for your parts so that you've got the C-axis, but also to support components to the left and right? Correct. I mean, that again, that was part of being on the steering committee with obviously Roger and everybody else back at Matsuri in the UK. It, and that, it enables us to, to tweak the product to give the customer something different. So what you've got with the flat table specification is a three-axis, a big four-axis, OP10, OP20, OP30, so you can top and tail your five-axis part. I'm also told by Mark that reliably Friday afternoons at Huppus One, you're always turning up for a cup of tea and a biscuit, correct? Don't tell Roger, will you? <laughs> <laughs> he won't watch, Absolutely, will he? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah, no. of, course, of course I do, yes, no, I don't know. 
March 7th, 8th and 9th. It's your open house, getting people to come along. Yeah, as I said, you know, please come along. Go on our website, have a look. You know, there is a, there is a perception in the marketplace that the Matsura isn't affordable to all, especially the small medium enterprise company. We are. Come and have a look. Get under the surface. You never know. You might really, really like what you see. Good sandwiches as well. <laughs> see you there. Especially the hog roast. Yeah. Thanks, Dominic. <laughs> all right. And as you know, Dom, we give one of these to everyone that comes on the show. You can put a bit of champagne in that over the weekend. Thank you very much. So I've been, Chelsea so I've been MTD'd then. Swarf and chipped. Oh, swarf and chip, sorry, I apologise. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming. No, thank you. Thanks for watching. Now, next week, Mark is going to be reaching new heights at Soditex, so you've got to watch. And we've got loads of comments coming in next week, so if you want to mention, please do send those in. Any previous episodes, you can watch just here. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning. <laughs>